we invite Professor Mohammad Alimuddin Kamri Sahib, huh. professor and head in National Institute of Yunani Medicines, Bangalore. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Stage is yours. Thank you. Namaskar ji. Thank you. Uh, is it, I'm audible to all of yes, you? Yes, sir, you're, you're audible. Your screen is and my slide is also seems to be looking. Is it visible? Yes, everything, everything is working, sir. Thank you. Oh, very. You're I'm very glad to have such a uh, wonderful constellation of the intellectuals for this webinar. Before I start my talk, I extend my greetings to Dr. Pawan Kumar Sharmaji, who offered me to have some discussion on this uh, beautiful uh, platform uh, for this it's a series of international conference organizing as an Ayu Samriddhi by the individual, uh, there is a research ethics board, the system. Very happy to be with you, sir. Of course, after learning to the, uh, the wonderful words of the two pre the speakers, uh, I'm taking you a little bit of the conceptual part of the pharmacovigilance, uh, focusing more about the Yunani. And uh, I have some of the query answers to the questions raised by the two speakers like. Before I proceed further, uh, I would like to submit about that Dr. Munshiji has told about that uh, since 2018 to till date, uh, 2022 February, uh, as a coordinator for this program, we have reported 220 ADRs from the exclusively Yunani drugs, out of which the 90% are only the mild one, uh, which is not truly reflecting like the ADR, very 10% are the moderate one. Of course, out of this moderate also, whatever the, uh, the categorization of this ADR we have made, again, based upon the uh, Naranjo algorithm only, and uh, they are all they are falling under the probable uh, the probability of uh, that uh, algorithm based upon the Naranjo. I mean, we cannot rule out that. Yes, sir, just a moment, just a moment, just a moment, just a moment. You can you can see it. Somebody is playing with the screen. Um, uh, please uh, refrain from these things because it uh, disturbs the speaker. Please. Yes, it was before. It was red dots. It was red dots. It was red dots. Please refrain from these things. We don't know who, who is doing this. Okay, sir. Uh, continue. Uh, sir, you can continue. Can I continue, sir? Right? Please, please. If okay, you wish sir. to... If you wish to restart your presentation, that red line will disappear. Too. No, not issue, sir. This is the first slide one. It's again okay, preface only. Uh, before that, I'm just I'm going to say the, what we have done so far, what the reports, ADRs we have collected for the last few years since 2008 to 2018 to 2020 to February, 220 ADRs exclusively been reported by the Unani Pharmacovigilance Center, out of which I said 90% are only mild based upon the, this Naranjo algorithm. And uh, coming to the part, basically, it's very difficult to define whether these ADR, what we have reported, are valid ADRs because there are three different components. And now, sometimes what happened to the ADRs could be from the physician side, and sometimes it could be a patient side, sometimes it could be a drug side also. And uh, unfortunately, the major majority of the ADRs, what we have received is related to the only one a compound formulation uh, that is there from the pharmacopoeia only, that is the Habbe. Uh, Shifa, that is the, Dr. Munshi has rightly told, uh, which contains like the Dhatura, Revatika, and Sunti. These are the Ayurvedic names, and according to we, we know that we told the Dhatura, Revanchini, Zanjabil, Zanjabil, Fushk is nothing but Sonta. And uh, we believe that there are uh, some of the things which is not wired with the physician to the patient, or sometimes the patient, they themselves are not taken proper care while are taking the drug. I mean, we have a very solid concept of taking badrakhas also there and some pre and post drug, uh, the, the certain principles are also there. And uh, beyond that also, we we are not sure about that, the drug related issue, like because it contains the thorastromenium, this is a, uh, according to Ayurvedic also, this is one of the toxic drug. We do believe this is the fourth degree of the drug, it is a noxious, it's a poisonous one. 
unless and otherwise you are not doing proper detoxification of the drug if any portion lies undetoxicated it mm -hmm. also causes uh, the manifestation of adia this is just a preface to that one and uh, from of the some of the points which is told by dr satyaraj ji like in all the cases we do that the challenging and the de challenging and the re challenging is also is going on uh, recently just two days back up because i used to have a consultation for the dermatology patients on every thursday uh, a family of a patient who's about 60 years old he had an urticaria like symptoms he was treated with the conventional medicine though his problem was not controlled but as a regimen what we provided them that is one of this the tamarind juice in empty stomach followed by ravalfia serpentina the powder it's a small quantity so in, according to us we, we provide them of eight grains like size uh, the two single one day along with kushtai sadaf that is called as the calcium preparation and it is my regular observation that most of the patients started giving response to this one unfortunately what i found from this gentleman was and uh, the symptoms were flared up and automatically he himself withdraw the drug and the symptoms was disappear this is what we have reported this is a recent recent case which is the adr i reported to the pharmacovigilance center and uh, my observation here it is because the drug which is being used for the last several years together and uh, Excuse me, Yasir sir, please mute yourself. Please. Yasir, please mute yourself. And because there is a biological variation from individual to individual, because there are so many factors. My science says that there is a temperament, the mizaj of the drug, mizaj of the individual, and different conditions are there. Uh, the, so all the drugs are not equally effective in all the patients. There is a difference. So based upon the patient condition, the mizaj, we have to change the drugs also. That I, I can agree that maybe it is my fault. As a physician, I have not given the thing proper. I have not paid much attention to the patient condition. That is an exceptional case. And uh, with these few words, uh, I'm just going further to uh, enlighten the conceptual part of the pharmacovigilance and the good clinical practice. Uh, this is what I have thought to give. This is very basic one. This is a conceptual only. Uh, beyond the two other speakers, what they have told, they are, those, those were their observations. GCP, pharmacovigilance of ASU drugs. Here, ASU stands for Ayurveda, Sita, Unani, and Homeopathy. But I am just restricting, limiting my talk to the Unani system of medicine, what we have in our dust. Like uh, the definition pharmaco and vigilance stand for this uh, Greek term, drug and uh, vigilance is this watching. All, we are well versed with this. According to WHO, it is defined as the science activities relating to the drug-related action that is detection, assessment, understanding, and the prevention of adverse effect of any other possibly dull drug like a, that what is the standard again definition of the pharmacovigilance. This is a WHO issued standard definition nowadays we are using. And adding the, the important thing is under the purview of this pharmacovigilance program, uh, WHO included some other things. It includes, I mean, the sphere expanded to the other parts like herbals, because nowadays, uh, the globally, people are focusing towards the use of the herbal drugs for the, uh, the, as a preventive and the therapeutic purpose. This is one of the emerging era, and more, mostly the people are moving towards this, uh, apart from the conventional. And some of these herbal uh, medical systems in different countries has been named as traditional medicine and complement and alternative medicine. Probably this Ayush uh, Yunani is also WHO has been considered as one of the traditional medicine. And like some blood products also been included into pharmacovigilance, biologicals, medical devices, vaccines, substandard medicine, irrespective of any system of medicine. Because uh, as a practitioner, we used most of the, we, we are observing most of the time, the herbal drugs, the crude drugs, what we are getting from the market, they are of low valued one, substandard medicine. Can you expect the good from the substandard medication? Sometimes it could be a negatively affected the body. Medication is another important factor because when I ask you, ask them to provide asgan, and sometimes we are getting a brew that is aconite. Uh, asgan is a vitinia somnifera. Instead of that, the vendor has provided aconite. Aconite is a quite is a cartridge kind of a drug. It's a, it's a very toxic one. 
if you are not having proper identification similarly there are so many drugs are there if you are giving the drug suppose if it's a local application drug wrongly advised the patient or patient has taken wrongly used orally so it also causes problems so medication are also has a different point lack of efficacy of report of the certain drug use of drug without indication on inadequate scientific basis are also lead to pharmacovigilance nowadays the biggest chapter is abuse and misuse of the medication there are so many factors relying there either patients they don't have a time to go and contact the doctor or whatever the factor it could be once they got the prescription they started using the drug for a long 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 period that is abnormal use sometimes it could be misusing also leading to the pharmacovigilance drug interaction with the drug drug interaction of the food this is one of the biggest area where the people are going to focus on that i have some of the information from our literature uh, i would like to enlighten this one and recently this material vigilance has also been added to the pharmacovigilance and luckily india is the only country what i believe under the pharmacovigilance program misleading advertisement related to i system of medicine also been included to this in total i can say not only the drug related activities of adr beyond that also the so many thing have been included into the pharmacovigilance activities at the pharmacovigilance definition right if you look at this the actual the documentary pharmacovigilance uh, timeline Uh, probably we believe that 1848 there is a one uh, condition started with the 14 year girl uh, she has been given chloroform as anesthetic and like that it continued up to and uh, this is 1661 thalidomide disaster before that there is what there was an sulfonamide elixir tragedy and uh, after that there is amendment of the laws also this finally globally the people they thought, they thought that something should be there as a regulatory issue to control all this drug related issue drugs are not only to be marketed in the uh, not only to be marketed uh, just based upon the efficacy they had to be ensure the safety also after that uh, this who started in 1968 there is one called as drug safety monitoring center later it has been upgraded to the upsala monitoring center that is what 1970 it is going on this is a, a brief uh, timeline timeline of the pharmacovigilance incidents if you look at the beyond 1848 because most of the i system of medicines are there in, in practice in uh, reality okay and uh, documentation was not taking place uh, at that time if you look at the history if you look at the texts we have enormous description of how to prevent that adr how to come out of this adrs also uh before we go proceed because the uh, this particular international web series is, is dedicated to uh, have made on good clinical practice of ayush along the pharmacovigilance let us try to understand what exactly the good clinical practice here basically this good clinical practice is an international ethical and scientific quality standards for the designing conduct performing monitoring auditing recording analysis and reporting of the clinical trials basically this uh, gcp is came into existence from the international conference on harmonization they thought they are thinking about that they thought about it because there are there is n number of uh, what is called as the safety related issue violation of the ethical ethical issues where the patients are not being given appropriate safety uh, safety measures and apart from without including their consent and several uh, clinical trials were conducted after that they came to know that one has to be have a proper documentation and this ich gcp came into existence somewhere 2060s only and what this says whenever doing some sort of intervention to the patient as a part of the trial or to know the safety and efficacy of the drug you have to have something into the mind uh, let me and uh, what i have understood from this basically the gcp guidelines is speaking more about the clinical trials and clinical trials are ultimately a, a process of drug development only because it here the drug mean not only the drug uh, it include some devices also some of the procedures techniques also right is a it is a big topic uh, which in, which is a part of the clinical trial and it could be for the therapeutic and prophylaxis and sometime like investigatory n number so there are so many number of objectical clinical trials are there but mostly whenever we, we talk about clinical trial mean it is a drug development process only and these clinical trials are different into uh, divided into different phases and though there are no phases not a phases it is only for the arbitrary categorization has been made and the all phases of this clinical trials are uh, focusing more on the ethical principles which is applicable here and these ethical principles are three that one is the respect of the person who to whom you are going to give the treatment try to provide the beneficial to the patient 
rather than the malefeasance and justice also important these three principle make the people and the scientists the people who are doing research more liberally to come out of the non ethical issues in the clinical trial or the drug development finally what happened because ultimate objective of the uh, the fraternity the people who are working for the drug is to be, to safeguard the rights of the patient and the individual who is part of the clinical trial if you look at this try to amalgamate this term good clinical practice and the pharmacovigilance in fact pharmacovigilance covers all phases of the clinical trial as a researchers we often follow zero phase for second third and the fourth phase basically these are the four phases of the clinical trial out of all, all these four phases pharmacovigilance is definitely there but more focusing on the phase four that is called the post marketing surveillance uh, that i can say rather than the post marketing surveillance is nothing but the pharmacovigilance phase of the drug development and uh, coming to the part it is my ethical and the moral responsibility to share what a unani scientist thinking about pharmacovigilance and unani medicine the gcp uh, from the wisdom from the knowledge of the texts are the unani what we understood there are so many uh, unani physicians are there out of some of them of this the very reputed ibn abn sina avicenna to whom we called as the ibn sina recommended testing of a drug if you are thinking there's a new drug try to uh, administer on the animal and humans to find out its effect before making it generalized to the public this is the fundamental right and because we believe there are certain principles of this as conceptually that we pay more attention toward the mizaj that is the temperament prakriti of the drug as well as the individual and if you look at this drug again so many drugs are there and the drugs have been categorized into four like dr munshi sir was telling about that we have a first degree second degree third degree and the fourth degree of uh, drugs are there based upon the quality if you administer fourth degree quality of a drug in a higher doses obviously because of the pharmacological activity of the drug it causes side effect then we need to take certain measures to control the side effects are so called the pharmacological adverse effect it is mentioned in the books also so we have some importance about the mizaj temperament a prakriti and the drug usage based upon its potentiality higher the degree higher will be the noxiousness that is understood already we came across and by the same time our physician they have uh, propagated and told that to prevent this noxiousness the toxicity of the drug that called as the muzirat in our, the persian language the muzir effect of the drug they had to detoxify it for each and every drug a proper method method of detoxification is an elaborately defined how many days has to be kept in a vector and how many times of what kind of a processing to be given individual description of all the four degree fourth and the third drugs are it is there sometime we need to add adjuvants also like we call it as a muslin mean they are going to do certain isla they we call it as an antidotes also based upon this according to the unani physician we have a established concept of the pharmacovigilance and the good clinical practice concepts also i am very happy to place the uh, the seven principles which is uh, laid down by the avicenna one has to be adopted in the clinical trial i believe as a research as a teacher of the research methodology i used to teach the clinical uh, research to the students i started my topic with this one because globally the people have accepted that the thing what avicenna has told to be adopted in the clinical trial the first principle according to use when you are using some drug that the under use must be a pure I mean the question of impurity is arising. If there is impurity or it is something like adulterated, then you cannot expect its actual importance of the drug. First principle. Second principle, he said that the drug must be tested only for one condition. We know that uh, if you look into the history, serendipitous uh, what is called the findings of the drugs. There are so many drugs. One drug was tested for something, and that we came to know we came out of the some other indications also. Avicenna has told that if while you are doing some research or intervention on the patient, you have to focus upon that only one condition. Don't take it as the another second the subsequent conditions to this. The third principle says the drug must be tested in contradictory disease states only. Here the point here the contradictory states means every disease is having one temperament, mizaj, prakriti. Similarly, the drug is also having uh, one particular uh, mizaj. Uh, Unani science believes that. if the disease of a cold temperament that should be treated with the hot temperamental drug that is of the principle of heterogeneity or we can say contradiction in arabic term persian we call it as usul bi zid zid mean contradiction opposite quality 
Third, fourth principle is the strength of the drug must be proportionate to the severity of the disease. If the disease is so severe and you are going to give a small potential, the strength of the drug is very slow and very poor, it cannot uh, yield the effect what you are intended to be. So it is the responsibility of the researcher and the physicians to find out the severity of the disease and the strength of the drug also. Uh, the time at which the medicine therapeutic effect becomes apprehended must be considered. Sometimes what happened, no? As a nature, the body itself has, uh, the nature itself is trying to resolve the disease condition. At the time when you are giving medicine to the patient, how we are going to say that whether the drug work against the disease are the by nature, the course of the disease itself, it is resolve the thing. So the medicine therapeutic effect should be appropriately been addressed. The second sixth principle has said the drug must be observed for its continued action and is the prolonged period of a time for its real effect. This is another important point. Sometimes what happened you know, for a small time, like in the case what I have told, exceptions are there, biological variations in the individual and the drugs also there. One patient out of my career, one only the one patient had told about the use of safufa asrol, that is the serpent and uh, uh, what is called as the serpaganda powder causes a flare up of his symptoms. I don't have any uh, such a reporting. I can say I had to find out that whether it is doing continuously or it is only for the time being. Similarly, for the positive effect of the drug, also one has to go for the continued action for the prolonged period of time to be documented as an effectiveness of the drug. And the seventh and the last principle, according to this Avicenna, is in order to understand the strength and the effect of a drug, it is must be that the, the tested in a human and judgment to be made. Basically, the drug should be tested. Uh, sometimes should be uh, animal as well as human beings also before making this a generalized to give the final judgment. And there is a difference of opinions also said because when you tested among the animal because the, the temperament of the animal and the human temperaments may be different. Uh, there is a, a difference of opinion among the different atibba, but they propagated that drugs should be equally tested among the animals to uh, by the same time on the human beings also. Like what today the modern, the, uh, the complete drug development process in the laboratories is going to do. These are the seven principles which focuses on the GCP and by the same time they are going on through the pharmacovigilance point also. And let me uh, say some of the quotations what we found our literature and some of the authorities have said, uh, no effective medicine is without risk. Even uh, in the, uh, the introductory lecture also, uh, we are learning from the learned speakers that of course nature, the drugs, herbal drugs are safe of course, it is a misnomer nowadays. It is a wrong notion. It has been proved that the most of the things from the herbal source or the nature are also proved to be some sort have they have some risk also. This uh, quotation, this point has says no effective medicine is without risk, including herbs also. Uh, I tried to bring some of the uh, point from the uh, Unani literature, which is translated from the Persian Arabic. It is with reference to the Jalinus, the gal and the Roman physician. He said that whenever I have insomnia, sleeplessness, I used to take the lettuce seed that is called as a kahu. A hilia, hilia, I mean the crystals of the kahu. And because kahu had its own uh, contraindication. To prevent this contraindication, I used to add certain darchini along with this, the other one. See, the both the thing he's telling, the drug, it causes it causes some contraindication. So to prevent the contraindication, he suggested something to be added to prevent this contraindications are so-called side effects also. Adding another thing, poison is in everything and nothing is nothing is no thing is without poison. The dosage makes it either a poison or the remedy. According to the Paracelsus, this is a very globally renowned act of the sort of definition. Every system is having drugs. All the systems, nobody can say that our drugs are safe. If you are not giving an appropriate dosage, that is the only the dose and the dosage will make a difference uh, the, from uh, what is called the effectiveness to uh, poison also. Uh, one of the, the, the point which I, I had taken from the books is Al-Havi Fiti, which is of Razi. He said that Bakasarat Pani Pina Kharab hai. If you are going on use, taking huge quantity of water, water itself will cause this water intoxication. So it causes the bodily, there is a change in the, there is a cause of physiological imbalance, equilibrium of the body. So one has to take about the dose related issue. That's Sharaab ka kasarat ta istemal fikr ko fasid balid kam aur makadar kar deta hai. According to Jali knows, he said that alcohol consumption causes alcoholic intoxication. Like today, how many people are saying that 
they are controlling the equilibrium there n number of crimes are also going because it causes there is a change in the cognitive no, no, so then and uh, uh, this point I, I i am very happy to place before all of you this in from the literature what i found is dawa usi waqt istemal kijiye jab zarurat ho there is and there ever, whenever there is a need who can use the drug otherwise it because it, it don't find any disease in the body so it adversely act on your health also this is the hypothesis according to what yeah. it says unless and otherwise there is a need don't no need don't take the medicine drugs otherwise it will causes injury to your health also if this is one of the another uh, person he told to undergo treatment you had to be very healthy because apart from your sickness you had to withstand with the medicine also these are a few quotations and there is a wonderful concept of drug drug interaction and drug food interaction from unani literature uh, they said that taza machli or dood fish and milk if you are going to take both the thing ko ek sath na khana chahiye don't take both the thing because it causes that is called as a vitiated uh, what is called as a madda like that can leads to the con onset of leprosy and sometimes it can leads to paralysis also if they are going to be a chronic one uh, similarly there are so many and this is a very wonderful historical incident happened with our own personality avisena uh, the uh, ibnisina uh, he had a problem if you look at this context from the uh, uh, this alkhanun fitti what i came to know that he used to suffer at the end of his life stages he is often we suffer with this colic pain intestinal colic was there and uh, there is a sahaj mean that is what is called the dysentery like condition also there but as a part of treatment he often suggested his uh, what is called the follower the people along with him to give enema because he can he, he is unable to take the drug orally to prevent to control the condition the drug was administered through the enema this is a procedure how what happened where his followers are unknowingly given tukhme karfs that the quantity is 17.5 grams and this is not the recommended dose ultimately what happened all, all these uh, what is called as over dosage of the drug causes the collapse of bhuli cinamine that is was one of the reason for his death uh, this clearly indicate that over drug over dosage uh, uh, how that's going to interact with the body i think dood ko tursi ke sath nahi jama karna chahiye it should not be will should not be given along with what is called as this acidic substances the sari is a kind of a food khane ke baad angur nahi khana chahiye and the recent modern science is saying that try to avoid this grape and grape juices along with some food because it causes uh, it may leads to so, uh, number of a complications and harisa is a type of a food not to be given along with the nar tarbuz chawal sath nahi khana chahiye all these things are saying that what to be used what not to be used because their insight was saying something like there is a drug drug interaction drug food interaction food food interactions or so all the things so based upon this uh, few of these uh, findings i say uh, unani system of medicine had an enormous description of the pharmacovigilance today what we are talking about drug drug interaction herbal interaction and many more things are there and uh, i'm not wasting my time here terminology is what we use the side effect generally even the literary people also often confuse the side effects are adrs are side effects adrs are different from side effects side effects are non pharmacological activity of the drug adrs are which is unintended happen in a normal dosage only and uh, uh, adverse drug reaction what we are generally talking about that serious adverse reaction that can leads to death of the individual prolonged hospitalization sometime significant disability incapacity life threatening conditions are these are the term generally we use in the pharmacovigilance uh, i said my talk is more about the conceptual uh, one and uh, because i thought most of the people may may not be knowing about the pharmacovigilance program of ashu drugs it is a my tribute to the people who have uh, made this uh, pharmacovigilance program of ayush so uh, it's my pleasure to introduce these personalities professor k c singhal sahab was the father of the pharmacovigilance in india and by professor madhav singh bhagel who was the pharma vice chancellor in charge for the gujarat ayurveda university jamnagar and professor sayed jillu rahman he is the founder of this ibn sena academy of the medieval uh, medical sciences and uh, he did a lot of a contribution in the field of unani pharmacovigilance related issue uh, i am adding something this this is the aim and aims of the pharmacovigilance ultimately as a whole uh, it the intention is to improve patient care and safety improve public health and safety 
contribute to the assessment of benefit harm effectiveness and risk of medication and promote understanding education and clinical training for the pharmacovigilance these are certain aims objective is to make a culture of notifying this adr and involving all the healthcare professionals long term objective is to make a benchmark for global uh, what is called the data about the safety aspect of the iso drugs uh, this is only 2004 when who has given a clear guidelines on herbal system of medicine about the safety monitoring then in 2007 8 uh, in india before that in 2005 this is center for safety and rational use of indian system of medicine which is established by ibn sina academy of medical medical sciences uh, they have established and these people have taken an initiative for the pharmacovigilance program in india particularly they focus on ayurveda unani and uh, as a part Uh, the Society of Pharmacovigilance in India, in collaboration with CSRUM, they conducted a national symposium. And from there, there is one what is called the recommendation to start exclusion of national pharmacovigilance from ICU drugs. There, this is about the history how uh, this pharmacovigilance program, particularly for this ICU system, came into in India. 2078 IPG, that is Institute for Postgraduate Teaching uh, and Research in Ayurveda, Jamnagar. and very we are happy to have uh, professor rabi narayan ji uh, the uh, present director general of ccrs who is who uh, who is supposed to be the uh, man behind this program who started and he was the sub first member secretary and the coordinator of the program after a long of efforts they started this program and uh, the recommendation was that the first pharmacovigilance cell for ayurveda established in ipt jardiar in, in the jamnagar and uh, they have come forward then uh, in 2008 uh, government of india launched a protocol for the national pharmacovigilance like like this uh, a first phase of activities is started and i said jamnagar was national pharmacovigilance center there are regional pharmacovigilance center uh, started all over india niam bengaluru the place where i am working today was the center for this unani like uh, there were some 25 ayurvedic four unani and siddha all together 30 centers were started doing functioning present situation is uh, as and today uh, this program is reinitiated in 2078 and now uh, the jamnagar center has been shifted to all india institute of ayurveda that is uh, sarjivar uh, new delhi and uh, as and today we have 74 peripheral pharmacovigilance centers out of which uh, the five intermediary two for ayurveda one for unani and one for siddha and homeopathy and uh, as a uh, caretaker of this pharmacovigilance for the unani we have 11 centers uh, through pan india Uh, these are the some of the centers and mostly they are occupied by the central council for research in unani medicine uh, thank you for this uh, oh, deliberation and the given me the opportunity